He says, one day I was, my, I couldn't go home. And he says the, the alcohol was not available. So I went, I didn't know where to go. He wasn't a Muslim at the time. So he went by the Kaaba. He just wanted to pass his time. And he says, I noticed someone reading. I went closer, it was Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was reciting Quran by the Kaaba. So in a few minutes, I'm just going to tell you a message. Make the world hear the Quran. What happens to Hazrat Umar who wasn't a Muslim yet? He says, I didn't want him to realize I'm listening to him. So I hid inside the curtain of the Kaaba. And Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is reciting the Quran. And what was he reciting? Lo and behold, al haqqah And what an amazing chapter of the Quran Kareem that highlights Judgment Day. And what happened to the nations who refuted Judgment Day. So al haqqa and Sa'ala Sa'il appears. al haqqa Sa'ala Sa'il. Both discuss aspects of Judgment Day. Like the next chapter speaks of the length of Judgment Day. Khamsina al fasana This chap- chapter discusses some great extent of Judgment Day in a very powerful warning manner. To such an extent that even the initial verses of the chapter was not known to the Arab. Of emphasis... This sequence of emphasis, al it was actually a shock, an awakening. Anyway, he listens to this chapter and he's thinking, that's so beautiful, but what could this be? And his mind, in his mind he's thinking, maybe this is poetry, because the rhythm of the chapter is so beautiful. The Quran has such amazing rhythm, even though it, it's not on the scales of poetry, because it's far beyond and above poetry. But its rhythm... Especially these Makki surahs have an amazing ending and sequence and rhythm. So enjoyable to listen to and to read. He says, maybe this is poetry. And the verses come. وَمَا هُوَ بِقَوْلِ شَاعِرٍ This is not the words of a poet. Hazrat Umar says, what? I just thought in my mind that this is not poetry and the answer comes in the Quran. What can this be then? This must be sorcery, magic. He says, I just thought that in my mind and the next verse states, Wala bi kahin. This is not the words of a fortune teller. Then he says, I'm asking myself, what is this then? And Allah responds in his kalam, Tanzeelum min Rabbil Alameen. This is the gradual revelation from Rabbul Alameen. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa did not Compose it from his own. Because if he had to, then these verses of the Quran Kareem is a powerful warning for anyone who lies against Allah. To say Allah says this and Allah didn't. Very, very powerful verses that we have to be very careful of when translating. But the crux of the point I want to make today is how the Quran and listening to the Quran permeates the hearts. In Sahih Bukhari, Hazrat Abu Bakr constructed a masjid outside his house where he used to read the Quran. And Hazrat Abu Bakr's intention was everyone must hear the Quran. Sahaba didn't want to conceal the message of Islam. Let me ask you, the first Sahabi to give da'wah we all know, Hazrat Abu Bakr, right? But the first Sahabi who had it in his heart that the mushrikeen must hear this beautiful kalam. They must hear the quran Karim. And he went by the Kaaba and openly he started reading the Quran Kareem. Who was that Sahabi? Who can tell me? Correct. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu. He went by the Kaaba and he wanted the mushrikeen to hear Allah's kalam and he started. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Ar-Rahman. Allama al-Quran. Khalaqa al-insan. Allamahu al-bayan. Al-shamsu wal-qamaru bi-husban. Wal-najmu wal-shajaru yasjudan. Wal-samaa rafa'aha wa wada'a al-mizan. That the Makki surahs are very short. So even before they could stop you, already some verses permeated the, the ear and penetrated into the heart. That's one of the wisdoms of the shorter verses. By the time they're sitting in their gatherings, who's this reciting? What is he reciting? Few verses already entered his ear. Oh, this is Ibn Ummi Abdin. Ummu Abd son. Abdullah bin Mas'ud was known as the son of of Ummu Abd. That was his mother. They pounce on him and they torture him. And he came back and 
it comes in the seerah that he was very tiny built. Even his shins were small. One day when he was climbing a date palm tree, probably to bring some dates for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa but he was up the tree and few others were laughing at his thin shins. So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, you are laughing at his shins. This man's shins is weightier on judgment day than even the entire Uhud mountain. That was Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu. Small built, tiny built, but powerful in iman and grand in knowledge and amazing qualities. Subhanallah. When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa used to go to meet the jinnat, you know Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa used to go to teach the jinnat also. And he would say, Abdullah, you come with me. He used to take Abdullah bin Mas'ud with him. Abdullah bin Mas'ud used to go with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa used to teach the jinnat. So anyway, he was the first sahabi to openly recite the quran e kareem And the first sahabi to call the Quran Mus'haf. Mus'haf was Abdullah bin Mas'ud's elder brother. Many of us know, don't know him. Like we know Hazrat Umar, we don't know his elder brother Zaid. We know Hazrat Abdullah bin Mas'ud, but sadly we don't know his elder brother who became Muslim before him. Utbah bin Mas'ud, radiallahu anhu. One of the greatest muhadditheen are the offspring of Utbah bin Mas'ud, radiallahu ta'ala anhum. He was the first Sahabi to call the quran Karim Mus'haf. Anyway, Hazrat Abu Bakr used to recite the quran Karim openly. In his masjid. Where was his masjid? Not inside his house, in front of his house. He constructed a masjid with no walls. And the intention of Hazrat Abu Bakr was everyone must hear Kalamullah. Everyone going past, they hearing Abdul Abu, Hazrat Abu Bakr reading Quran. They stopping, they listening. The mushrikeen of Makkah also. <coughs> when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi used to recite the Quran, they used to hide and they used to listen. Very, very senior people like Abu Jahl and so forth. Then when they realize they're listening, they prom- would promise each other, Tomo- we can't come here. What are our people going to say? So let's make an oath, we won't come tomorrow. So the seniors would take an oath. Next day, when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi is reciting the quran e kareem they're also pining to hear. They're also amazed at the quran e kareem Next day, they all day. This is the power of the quran e kareem Allahu Akbar. This is the greatest miracle Allah has given us. You know when they came to Abu Bakr anhu, they said to him, Oh Hazrat Abu Bakr, you can't do this. If you want to read Quran, you want to make your ibadah, go inside your house and do it. Don't do it outside because all our people are listening to you. They're coming home, they're emotional, they're telling us about your Quran. We're not interested, we don't want to know. Stop it, otherwise we will retract the protection you have, the visa you have to stay in Makkah. He says, you can... Do what you want with the visa or the protection. But I will not stop worshipping my Allah openly. So I just mentioned these few incidents to tell you. We have a message for the world. Among the earliest Meccan surahs is Surah Noon. And from Surah Noon also Allah says, In huwa illa dhikrul lil alameen. The quran Kareem is a reminder for the whole wide world. The world is waiting. Make them hear Qur'an. Take Qur'an for ourselves. Learn it. We have Darul Ulum. Some of us are not studying. Take out some time. Learn. Improve. But make the message. This is my plea today. And I finish with this point. This was the point I wanted to make. Let's leave this Ramadan with this message. That the whole world must hear our Qur'an that we have. Rasulullah said, They will be fitten before Judgment Day. Sahaba asked, Famal Makhraj. What, what, will, what will resolve this issue for us? What will take, our, take us and save us from the fitan? Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Kalamullah. So even if you're in your car, you're sitting with someone, tell him, let's not speak, just listen. Afterwards, after five minutes, switch it off. Tell, tell, ask him, what do you think? What do you think? And in the quran e Kareem, in Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi da'wah, Yatlu Alayhim comes. In his da'wah, he used to, at one point, he used to make them hear the Qur'an Kareem. So you will be practicing a great sunnah by making people hear, make Muslims hear, make non-Muslims hear and tell them the meaning also. Will you do that, inshallah? Jazakumullah khairan. We have the last day. What Ibn Jawzi says, don't let the horse be wiser than us. When the horse sees the finish line, what does he do? Does he give up? No, he pushes more. So we got one more day. Imagine every one of us start Khatmul Quran today. We can finish before Maghrib tomorrow. Every, we should actually challenge each other. 
You know, Allahu Akbar, Imam Shafi'i, how many Qur'ans a day he used to read in Ramadan? Two Qur'ans a day. 60 Qur'ans in Ramadan. Imam Abu Hanifa, the same. Qatada bin Di'ama, out of Ramadan he used to finish a Qur'an every seven days. But in Ramadan, every three days. Imam Bukhari, rahimahullah, very similar terms. We all, we all will try, inshallah. So imagine we start now, tomorrow by Maghrib, inshallah, we'll finish. Allah give us tawfiq. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyil ummi bi rahmatika ya arhamad rahimin.